Now you guys have already learned how to spike the bag and prime the tubing. Now it's time to learn how to give IV fluid via gravity method. In order to do that, what we need to learn is calculating the fluid drop rate. And in order to calculate the drip rate, the drop factor is needed. And the formula for calculating the IV drip rate is total volume in milliliters divided by time in minutes and multiplied by the drop factor which is in gutte per ml. This will give you the IV drop rate in gutte per minute, which means the drops per minute. Now, let's just assume for demonstration that doctor has given us the order to give 1000 ml of fluid in 8 hours via tubing which has drop factor of 10. Now, if you will do your calculations, in which your total volume is 1000 ml times 10, so we are taking here that the drop factor of the tubing is 10, and how you can find those drop factors? By looking at the back of the IV tubing. Every package will display what's the drop factor. Divided by time, which is 8 hours. So you have to convert your 8 hours into minutes. Because in this formula, the time has to be in minutes. So if you do your calculation, your drop rate is going to come to 20.83. Now, as nurses, you know, when we are calculating the drops, they have to be in the whole number. They cannot be in the decimal. So, 20.83 will turn out to be 21 drops per minute after rounding up. Now, let's just see how to set up these 21 drops per minute on the patient. So, make sure that your bag is ready and it's hanging on the IV pole and then your tubing is all primed and ready to go. Now, make sure that you have stopwatch or the watch which has a second hand ready to go. And then slowly and gradually, you turn the roller clamp on. You can also estimate and see that you are getting approximately 21 drops per minute. How you can do that? You can do that just by counting those drops, which are falling in the drip chamber. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's probably, you know, you can see it's going a little fast or a little slow. So what you need to do is you need to adjust your roller clamp. If it's too fast, you can tighten it up. If it's slow, you can open it up and then make sure that you're getting exact 21 drops per minute. And make sure you want to do this before you hook up the IV tubing to the patient because you don't want to keep on doing the regulation while the IV is hooked up to the patient because you can accidentally administer too much or not enough fluid to the patient. So both are not clinically correct options to do. So that's why I make sure that your adjustment is done. And that's why you would see we primarily use pumps, which you have already learned. And we still use this method because just in case, you know, if there is any natural calamity, disaster, cyclones, hurricane, earthquake, if there is no electricity, then nurses, they still should be able to infuse the IV fluid to the patient using the gravity method. So this is pretty simple. It's like you need to learn the adjustment and counting the drops, adjustment of the roller clamp and then how you can fiddle with the roller clamp to make sure that you're getting the exact drops per minute. Now, when you're happy with the 21 drops, which are flowing through the drip chamber, now you're going to hook up your tubing to your patient and let it run. So make sure before you connect that IV tubing to the patient's saline lock, you want to clean that port for 30 seconds. So I hope you enjoyed learning with a very simple method of how to attach the IV fluid via gravity. If you are enjoying and liking our videos, please subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned for more clinical videos. Thank you very much. Hello, nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning this nursing skill. Now, let's just move on and practice some MFLEX style questions associated with the skill. Here is the first question on your screen. The nurse should implement which intervention to maintain potency and prevent infection for a client with a peripheral intravenous which is peripheral IV. Here are your four options. Pause the screen and think for yourself which one is the answer before I discuss. All right, guys. Option number A, change the IV tubing every 24 hours. What do you guys think? That is incorrect because changing the IV tubing every 24 hours is premature and may increase the risk of infection through contamination. And always follow hospital policy. Most of the hospitals would recommend changing IV fluid sets 48 to 72 hours after. All right, look at the option number B. Use a transparent dressing over the IV site. What are you guys saying? 
Yes, you have seen that. You have learned that in the videos. That is correct. Use a transparent dressing over the IV site allows for visualization and assessment of the site without disturbing the catheter. So that is correct. Look at option number C. Apply pressure to the site after flushing with saline. What do you guys think? Applying pressure to the site after flushing with saline is not necessary and can cause trauma to the site. So that's why this is incorrect. Look at option number D here. Option number D says use a sterile water to flush the IV site. What do you guys think? That is incorrect because injectable normal saline is the one which is used to flush the IV, not the sterile water. I hope you guys are still learning and enjoying with me. Let's just move on to the next question. Here is the next question on your screen. The nurse is priming IV tubing for a client who requires an infusion of D5NS, which stands for dextrose 5% normal saline. Which of the following steps should the nurse perform to ensure safe and effective priming? Here are your four options. Pause the screen and think for yourself which one is the answer. All right, guys, let's just review option number A. Fill the drip chamber completely with the D5NS solution. What do you guys think? What you learned in the video? That is incorrect. The drip chamber should be filled to the line provided or one third to half full like this is what you can do. This ensures that the nurse can see the fluid moving within the drip chamber while the IV is infusing. Let's just look at the option number B. Prime tubing with the roller clamp fully open. So that is incorrect. The roller clamp should be opened slowly during the priming of IV fluid. Slow fill of the tubing decreases the turbulence inside the tubing and the chances of bubble formation. Look at the option number C. Allows D5NS solution to flow onto the floor when the tubing is primed. Look at this. This is incorrect because this is an unacceptable practice. Look at the last option, option number D here. Remove air bubbles from the tubing by capping the tubing. And what do you guys think? Yes, D is the correct one. Removing air bubbles by tapping the tubing ensures that there is no air which is infused in the patient's bloodstream. And you know that can be harmful, causing emboli. So I hope you guys are still hanging on and learning with me. Let's just move on to the next question here. A nurse is caring for a client in need of a blood transfusion. Which of the following action should the nurse perform to prevent hemolysis of the blood cells? Those are your four options. And pause the screen and think what do you think is the right answer? All right, guys, let's just review option number A, priming the tubing with normal saline. And guys, that is the correct option. And this question is so important for NCLEX. Yes, normal saline is the only solution to be ever infused with the blood because normal saline prevents hemolysis of the blood cells. I know you guys would say, Taran, we already know the answer, but let's just still review B, C, and D. Option number B, priming the tubing with dextrose 5% and normal saline. So you guys know that is not an appropriate answer because dextrose can cause hemolysis of the RBCs. So hence, not recommended to use. Look at the option number C, priming the tubing with sterile water. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. You can never use anything else apart from normal saline to be given with blood transfusion because sterile water is for injections, which is for compounding purposes only and not for ever IV direct infusions. Look at option number D, priming the tubing with the blood cells to be infused. And this is incorrect because tubing should be primed with normal saline. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NPLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.